Hello and uh, welcome to Trace Cloud. Uh, in this video, to show you how simple and easy to use Trace Cloud is, in about 10 minutes, I will show you how you can trace your requirements, organize your requirements, run a report, and email the reports out. Okay. So I have a project that I've already defined um, called a Demo Video Project. In this, you can see I have my high level requirement types. Uh, there's a folder for each type of business requirements, functional, and test cases. Now, as you have hundreds and hundreds of these requirements in one folder, they become a little difficult to manage. So what you can do is you can always create these folders. So let's say you have your mechanical requirements um, and you could have other subfolders created here. Uh, you could have folders within this if you wanted to, right? So you could go multiple levels deep and uh, you can create these subfolders. And then at that point, it's as simple as picking uh, a requirement and then deciding to moving it to your mechanical uh, or electrical subfolders. If you wanted to do this in bulk, um, that process is about as simple as doing a right click, create a report, select all the objects that you want to move. Uh, let's say I want to move uh, uh, this one, this one, and this one. Uh, I go here and say, I want, really want to move these to a folder called my test cases slash mechanical requirements. And uh, at that point, they're all there. So if you go here, I should see some here. If you go here, I probably should see one in here already set up. Yeah. So that's how you can kind of organize your requirements by moving them into folders and subfolders. So you're not dealing with thousands of them in one place. But once you have them in this folder, you get by definition something called folder metrics, tells you what's happening in the folder. Or if you wanted to, you could always go and run your own complex report. Let's say let's go here and I want to run a report. Uh, apply the appropriate filters, include everything in my subfolder, uh, apply the attribute filters, find the dangling requirements, and, and run the report. Right? And once the report is here, you could always go ahead and save the report by going to modify report and save report. And uh, once the report is saved, you can email a link to that report if you wanted to. Or if you, some, something, uh, if you wanted to simply uh, refresh the report and send the results out, you could either get an Excel dump from here or send this report out as an attachment to anybody you want to send it to. So if you have been following along, you should be able to uh, create your requirements, create folders, create a subfolders, and, and run a report and mail the report out. Right? Uh, let's talk about traceability. Right? Traceability is another term for connecting your requirements. And where it becomes handy is, for example, let's say I have one release, and this is called my alpha release. And in this alpha re release, I am kind of uh, executing some business requirements. And each business requirement comprises multiple functional requirements, which in turn will lead to test cases and test results. Normally, in most systems, each of these teams are working in isolation. What you can do in TraceCloud is you can connect a requirement to other requirements. And that process is called traceability. So you could see that this functional requirement that I am on is executing a business requirement and in turn, it is being further downstream executed by test cases. So as different teams go ahead and build that connectivity, what you essentially get is you get a relationship that looks something like this. And it is best explained in a trace tree where if I run this, for example, you can actually see how a release has business requirements, which in turn has functional requirements. Uh, I could always go here and say, you know what, take it a little bit deeper. So I would like to see what is happening further down the chain. It is the same report now, but with more details. Release has business requirements, has functional requirement, which has test cases, right? So as different teams in your organization connect their work to other teams' work, then they are not working in a silo anymore and everybody has visibility to how one organization's work impacts the work being done by other organizations. And here are some quantifiable benefits of that. One is there is a term called dangling. And what this means is when I am doing some work or I'm delivering some requirements, and if my downstream teams are responsible to do this work, I want to identify all my requirements that nobody's working on downstream. 
So for example, if I am responsible for my functional requirements, I know that there is one requirement called hire astronauts that the downstream team isn't really taking care of. So I can go and chase it down and get an answer for that. Or the term O out here means orphan. That means this particular requirement is not part of any business requirements. So over time, when you go deeper into this topic, you'll see that there are a lot of benefits where you can easily identify these missed requirements. That is things you're thinking others are taking care of, but they're not. Similarly, there's a concept called a suspect trace. That means I am working on a requirement that is uh, either part of some other requirement or, or is somebody else is executing on my behalf, but somewhere along the way, somebody made a change to that relationship. And change is fine in organization so long as we're all on the same page, but this indicates some change made by somebody that I wasn't aware of. So I can look at it. If I'm comfortable with what is happening here, I can say, you know what, I'm fine with it. I can clear it. And, and over time, as everybody clears their suspect traces, things become, I would say, more and more in line uh, with everybody else. How do you do traceability? You have this button called Create Traces. You can go here, pick this requirement, figure out which, um, I would say, objects you want to connect this object to. That's one way to do that. Uh, alternatively, you could go to the home page and there's a big feature called Trace Matrix. Uh, this one lets you build a relationship between uh, requirements in one folder and, and requirements in another folder. And, and you can actually see a matrix view of the problem that you can go and work on, right? So for example, I have my, all my functional requirements on the left-hand side, all my business requirements on one. Uh, I don't have too much data, so it's not coming out very clearly, but I could, for example, show the relationship between test cases and functional requirements, and you can actually see a much bigger kind of relationship popping out out here. So this is a trace matrix view of the problem. You can also do something called a trace tree view of the problem, that is, you can look at all your requirements on any folder and say, build me a tree view, starting from here and working your way down so that at this point, I can see the relationship of for every requirement in this folder and the requirements that are downstream. Like I explained earlier, this pink line means the relationship between this requirement and this requirement is suspect. Uh, the D out here means this requirement here, test case is dangling because there's no test result coming to it. So if you're expecting somebody to be working on this, you need to go and follow up on it. You could get an Excel dump of this data or mail this attachment out. So that's how you can pretty much get started uh, with your work and be able to connect your requirements with the requirements of other people in your organization. And before you know it, everybody is having the same metrics and view of the problem. And you can actually build, do a complex change impact analysis of making any big change before you make that change. Hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to us at support at racecloud.com. Thank you.